Hi everybody, this is Tony Turner and welcome to How the Latest Brain Science Secrets Can Help You Earn More Profits in the Stock Market. We have a lot of exciting things to tell you this evening, but first we'll introduce ourselves. Who are we? A lot of you know me. I'm Tony Turner. I'm the president of Trendstar Trading Group. Uh, as Jeff says, uh, I've been around forever, <laughs> 20 years market experience. Uh, some of you know my books, A Beginner's Guide to Day Trading Online, A Beginner's Guide to Short-Term Trading, Short-Term Trading in the New Stock Market, and Invest to Win with Gordon Scott. And my books are out in about six languages. So I've been very, very uh, fortunate to be able to share my ideas. Uh, I've appeared, and you can see on this slide the different networks I've appeared on, and yes, I speak a lot at Traders Expos and Money Shows. Now I have with me today uh, <clears throat> my friend and colleague Diane Alexander, and I'm going to let Diane tell you a little bit about herself. Diane? Welcome. I'm Diane Alexander. And my education background is in psychology, business, and neuroscience. And what I've really spent my life doing is teaching people how to operate their brains more effectively. So uh, a way to think about this is, let's say you happen to put a bathing suit on and you notice that that figure of yours isn't what it used to be. And so you go to a gym. You tell this trainer what you want your body to look like. The trainer knows lots of resources and lots of techniques, and they have you do various activities, and you change the shape of your body. You actually change your physiology. That's exactly what I teach people how to do with their brain. You are able to do X but not Y, we can find exactly where Y is in your brain, where the brain behaves as though it's a muscle. We can change that physiology so that you have the physiology to support your ability to do the things that you really want. So that's my background. Tony, can you tell us a little bit about how all this fits in with trading and investing? Sure, Diane. Let's get started on that. Okay, everybody, this is obviously Tony again, and, and, and those of you who know me know that as an educator in the markets, I've been immersed in the market practically on a day-to-day -day basis for the last 20 years, and I have seen huge changes come about. And, and, and as I see this right now, as traders and investors, I believe that we have two problems. Now, the first has to do with change. Now more than ever before, the, we are globally connected. The second one has to do with complexity, uh, and the next one has to do with emotions. Now more than or uh, more than ever, I wanted to say we're globally connected. You could you could have seen it in the in the first two months of the year this year. China's markets had a rough time, and there was evidence of slowing global growth, and we still have that going on. So we had that in the world's two, second largest economy. That sent our markets and the markets of most nations into the doldrums. So we see change in this market that's happening all the time, change that I didn't have to worry about. When I started trading in the late 90s, we didn't have to worry about other countries very much except maybe to watch the Asian markets and see how they closed because that always affected our technology stocks. But other than that, on a general basis, we didn't have to. Now, since we are so connected, since the Internet connects all of us so quickly, and since a lot of us, of course, are overwhelmed by all of it, um, the, the change is, is absolutely massive. Also, we've noticed that the market dynamics changing has become more complex. Some indicate some, some uh, and, and I'm going to go to the next slide here, the, 
some, well, excuse me, I, I lost my place here for a minute. Some of the internal indicators that you and I look at every day actually work differently now than they did of the, in the old days. And a lot of that, like the tick and the trend, a lot of that is because of the, intro, the introduction of inverse exchange traded products. And that's only one example. Uh, volume is much lower in the last six years than in the, in the past years back to the year 2000. And when you have those kinds of things going on, you have to change strategies. Now, now, finally, for traders, are, em are emotions still rule? I'm going to say 99% of us, our emotions still rule. Uh, and and uh, did you know that we humans use emotions to make decisions 80% of the time and logic 20% of the time. And, and when we see markets fall, and actually the markets have fallen the last few days, kind of steadily, not really, really hard, but certainly harder than a lot of people thought. I heard people five days ago on CNBC saying, oh, this market's great. Nobody would be crazy enough to sell here. But in the meantime, some stocks have gotten whacked really badly. So a, a lot of times we see this, or we know that during earnings season, stocks gap down really hard. It's hard not to be fearful. Stress has become a way of life for many traders. Decisions made from fear, as we are going to show you, are extremely detrimental to our wealth. That's why I tell my students that the best mindset to adopt is calm confidence. That's kind of our, our mantra. So, Diane, can you talk a little bit about our second problem? Sure, and it's directly related to that first problem. As Tony talked about, that market is constantly changing. It's getting much more complex. And we have our money tied into that, which in just gets our emotions going. And we all know that there's not much we can do with that market. There's not, we don't have any control over it. But I do want to tell you, there is a whole lot that you can do about your brain that you can have control over. And I want to give you a real simple example. What I'd like for you to do is take both hands and hold them out in front of you and stretch your fingers out. And as you look at those two hands, that represents two of your brain cells. All right. So you have, let's just make the assumption that you have two brain cells to rub together. And you have a number of issues that you have to deal with in the market. So what a thought is, is an electrical chemical connection between two of the branches, one on each hand. So in this case, if you take the thumb of your left hand, we're going to have an electrical chemical connection go from the thumb of your left hand to the thumb of your right hand. Now you just had a thought. Now you had an aha. Now you had a solution to a problem that you're having. That's great. So now that you have a solution, we're going to have that thumb on the left hand send a connection to your index finger on your right hand. Now you just took action on that particular insight that you had. So that's what a thought is. You have these what we call um, brain cells and they have branches that would be your fingers and you send a connection from one branch to a branch on another hand. And if you look at this particular situation with all your fingers out, you would have lots of connections, lots of possibilities to come up with solutions because you've got five connectors on each hand. So in this situation, you could come up potentially with five different solutions. That means you have a lot of potential 
for having success in whatever this endeavor is that you're having to deal with. So I want you to keep your hands out there and I want you to close all the fingers on your left hand. And notice all you have left is your right hand. That's you after age 25. And I'm assuming that some of you are at least over 25. What just happened is you just lost an entire brain cell. And if you notice, that right hand now has nothing to make a connection with. So what happens after your mid-20s, you start to lose brain cells. And it's like a very slow tire leak. You know you get a real slow leak in your tire and you don't even know it and you're driving and driving and you think you're okay, but in reality you're not. So what happens is as you get older, you gradually begin to lose brain cells. And it happens so gradually that you're not even aware that it's happening until you start to notice, well, I'm having trouble coming up with a solution or I'm having trouble making something happen. It's gradual and you don't even know it's happening. That's one of the things that happens as you get older. That makes it very hard hard to come up with good solutions. Another thing that I want you to notice is um, that as you have, put your fingers back out on both hands and I want you to close on your left hand your little finger, your ring finger, your middle finger, and your index finger. So all you have is your thumb and you need to come up with a solution. I want you to notice that with that right hand you have a lot of connections but you can only make a connection with one branch on the other hand and the reason why that is is as you grow older not only do you lose brain cells but all those little branches start to get pruned. And so what happens is we have a habit, we have a routine, we have something that we do in the trading process on a regular basis and we don't use all those other branches. And so gradually they just kind of drop off and we call this, we habituate, we can only make one connection and it's the same connection. So we do something the same way time after time after time with a changing market, with a dynamic market, with a highly complex market. We may very well need to make a change. We may be motivated. We may be committed. We may understand and yet we find sometimes that we're not able to do it. So part of the aging process is we lose cells and we lose those branches to make connections so that we can only stay in our old habits. The other thing that I want you to notice is as you look at the skin on your hand, you notice that that skin protects all those um, things in your hand, your bones, your muscles, whatever. That skin is highly important. You have a similar thing on your fingers, your branches. It's a coating that's called myelin. And I hate to tell you this, but as you get older, your myelin dries up. Oh my gosh, Tony, we're going to have dry that. myelin. Wow. <laughs> Let me explain to you. It's, it happens. And the myelin is the thing that enables us to send that electrical connection down and make the connection. What happens as it dries up? You've all seen someone that has really severe arthritis in their hand and those fingers are all bent and the knuckles are large and that hand, if you kind of put your hand in the way that you've seen somebody with really severe arthritis, it's all kind of crunched up and after a while that person can never straighten those fingers. They are fixed and rigid in those knuckles. 
the same thing happens in our brain. When the myelin dries up, our brain becomes fixed and rigid. And you've all known people who can't change any longer, can't adapt. So those are a few of the aging things that begin to affect us as we get older. Tony, if you'd go to the next slide, I'd just like to summarize this. The reality is our second problem is our brain ages just like the rest of us. So as we get older, we lose brain cells and we get into habituating, we call that cow pass in our brains. Those cow pass keep us doing the same thing over and over. And what we know is that we may not have the physiology. We may think we have the physiology, but in reality, we may not have the physiology to keep up with today's dynamic market and its change, complexity, and emotions. But wait, Tony, there's even more. I don't think I can take any more. <laughs> well, I hate to tell you about this. But research shows, and we're going to show you some pictures of this in a little bit, that only 2.5% of us, and we call them master traders, 2.5% of us use our whole brain to make decisions, to operate in the trading process. That means that when we're trading and we're investing, we're only operating with a very small bandwidth. In other words, you've all heard that saying, we only use 10% of our brain. Actually, if we use 10% of our brains, we'd be doing phenomenal. So you've got this other 90, 95, 98% that you're not even tapping into. So just to sum this up, Tony, to sum it up, Diane, the financial markets are rapidly changing and they're more complex than ever before and I, I certainly don't see them getting any simpler as time goes on, especially we have an election going on now, uh, or at least starting, that is, is a total different way of doing things than we've ever done them before and the market's sensitive to that. So we have a lot going on right now, rapidly changing, more complex, then, even better, as we age, our brains become, let's call it, limited, to be polite. And now what we know from you is that traders and investors make decisions with only a small portion of the bandwidth that we have. A very small portion. I'm going to need a Kleenex here in a minute. <laughs> So, Diane, is there a solution? I know everyone's waiting for this. Wait for it. The answer is yes. You can discover how to use your brain for better results. You can discover how to use your brain to keep up with the market and to make wiser and better trading decisions. Now today, Diane and I are going to briefly introduce to you our revolutionary new training program, Trade Like a Master, Supercharge Your Brain for Maximum Profits. It's complete in four pre-recorded sessions. But before we get into that, I'm going to ask Diane to give us a little lesson for everyone here on how our brains operate. So. Please bring your brain and let's listen to Diane. And before Diane goes on, I'm going to add to this. You all do and I have and you have the ability to tap into much more of your brain's incredible power. That's the good news after everything Diane told us. This ability to tap into our brain is, is absolutely true. I've been doing it for the last year and a couple of months, really concentrating on it, and it absolutely works. You do have the ability to 
think and take action, not just with that tiny piece Diane was talking about, but we can use our whole brains. And believe me, that is a, it, 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 it is fantastic. I just can't tell you how much, how exciting it is. And finally, if you use your whole brain, that's going to lead to increased profits first, which I think we all want here. And, and, and what we also all want is a more successful life. So again, it's, this is fascinating stuff. Bring your brain and let's listen to Diane for a minute. Okay, so let's take a look at how many brains you actually have. What I'd like you to do is put your arms out straight in front of you and put your right hand on top of your left hand. So the good news is you have two brains that are nested on top of each other. The right hand, which is on the top, is called your neocortex. And that's the part of the brain that thinks. So whenever you're thinking about a trade or investment, you're up in that neocortex. Your left hand, which is under your right hand, is representing what we call the limbic brain, and that's the part of the brain that takes action. So as you look at those two hands of yours that are representing the two parts of your brain, you might think about or you might take a, an action in how you're looking at your hands of looking and thinking about which one do you tend to have a preference for? Do you tend to like to think about things or do you tend to like to take action? The good news is, is that we have both of these. They're obviously very complementary, especially in the trading and investing process. We want you to think about things and we want you to take action. So then as you look at those two hands, um, just uh, kind of spread the fingers. Um, how can I say this? Um, just imagine that your hand is split in two, okay? okay. But just pretend that we had a dividing line down the center of your both of these hands. What we now know is that we have each of these brains has a left and a right component. And the left brain is those parts that we use that are analytical, linear, logical, orderly, sequential, rational. Um, it's the part that's skeptical. What, what are we talking about? The brain and trading? Okay. It's the part that can be closed. You may have been in a meeting with somebody that was in their left brain and they said, you know, we just never did this thing this way before. You've just offered a new suggestion and they're rather closed. They have their arms closed around their chest and they're just not really wanting to do anything new. The left brain gives us order and consistency. And if you think of the trading process, that's really important because if we didn't have order and we didn't have consistency, we'd have complete chaos. Mm -hmm. So we certainly want to activate that part of the brain and both the neocortex and the limbic have a left brain to them. And if we have too much order, if we have too much consistency, we would really get boring. We'd have no new ideas. So that that doesn't happen, we have a right brain. Anytime you get a new idea, you're over in that right brain. Anytime you come up with something that's innovative, when you do big picture global thinking, when you look at the market from a big picture, you're in that right brain. When you're open and receptive to new ideas, you know, one of the things that the right brain does really miraculous is that it can process multiple things at the same time. That left brain can only do one item at a time and a step-by-step -step process. Your right brain can be processing all kinds of things and that's when you get your aha. 
you've actually been processing multiple things and they all come together. It's where we look in trends and patterns. It's where we just spur of the moment decide, yeah, I really think this stock is worth investigating. It's where you get your gut feelings. So a way of thinking about this is our brain is really divided into four parts. Here we have A and D. Those are the parts that like to think about things. So that's the neocortex. B and C is the part that likes to take action. We also have a left brain, that would be A and B, and we have a right brain, which would be C and D. So we've made this um, kind of a very simple picture to give you an idea. In reality, when you're trading, there's actually four, kind, they're kind of like muscles in your brain. That would be a way of thinking of them. They're a little different than muscles, but you actually have four different muscle-like um, aspects. And just like a muscle, you know you can go in and lift weights and certainly change your bicep. You can increase it. You can make it stronger. You can change the physiology of your bicep. And you can break your arm and let it sit in a cast for six weeks. And at the end of six weeks, it's a different muscle also because it's begun to atrophy. So what we find happens, especially as we begin to grow and mature, that we have a preference of some of these quadrants versus others. And let's just kind of go through these real quickly. Uh, if you're thinking in big pictures, if you like to look at trends, patterns, cycles, you're up in that upper right brain. You like to think about uh, large pictures, innovative things, look at things maybe a little different. You certainly love cycles, those kinds of things. You can also think about things in a right brain way. Those are people who like to do the technicals, the analytics. They like to quantify. They like to work with numbers. They like to work with data. Uh, they like to work with money. So they like to facts, figures, numbers. And we have another brain on the left-hand side that likes to put things in order, likes to sequence things, likes to have structure, likes to minimize risk. Okay, and we have a right brain that likes to take action in terms of emotions, whether that's our emotions and controlling those emotions effectively, or the market's emotions, which it has. So when we look at master traders, what we find is master traders actually use all four muscles. They like to look at the big picture, and they like to look at the technicals. They like to think about things, and they like to take action. One of the things that we do in the program is we actually begin to profile your brain, and I'm going to talk about that in just a minute. But for the moment, what I'd like you to think about is you each have a preference for one of these, or two or three of these quadrants. And I want you to think about what you might be missing if you're not doing all of these. So Tony, if I don't tend to use that upper right quadrant D, if I don't tend to look at what's happening in the market from a bigger picture, how could that, uh, what, what could be the liability there? Well, the liability, certainly to give you an example, the first of the year would be if we don't keep an eye on the overall picture, the end of last year, 2015, and the first of this year I referred to earlier, when China was having a very rough time as the second largest economy in the world. And of course, as our, our Fed was talking about um, raising interest rates, our market went down pretty dramatically. Now that's okay if you're, if you're 30 years old and in, you're investing for the next 40 years, that's fine. But, but those of us who are over 30, 
uh, or over 40, or even, for goodness sakes, a little older than that, are wise to look at the big picture, even if it's only taking a glance at the Wall Street Journal and a chart every Sunday. Of course, the traders in this room look every day and sometimes all day every day. Uh, but the big picture in the stock market is so important, and we can be as loose about it as is the S&P 500 moving in an uptrend on a daily, weekly, or monthly chart. That's just helpful. That's part of the big picture. To ignore it means that we could lose 5 or 10 or 15 or 20 percent of our portfolio uh, pretty much in a heartbeat. And, 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 and a lot of us right now, that's not a good idea as we approach our retirement. So it, ignoring the big picture, ignoring your D quadrant in your brain uh, can be detrimental to your wealth, Diane. Okay. Now I will tell you that there was a time in my life that I was a day trader. Ah, I know, <laughs> I know. Well, we all have our, you know. <laughs> dark moments <laughs> and since I've been working with Tony I found that there were quadrant A things that I really wasn't maybe using nearly as much as I should have and she's shown me some charts and meta stock charts actually yeah, yeah, they right. were actually meta stock, stock charts and when I immediately looked at those charts I saw what I did wrong so help us understand someone who isn't attending to Quadrant A things, how can that be a downside for them? Well, Quadrant A is where most traders and investors live, I believe, although I've certainly met quite a few who ignore it. Quadrant A is where we study. Quadrant A is where we look at, where we learn how to read charts. Quadrant A is where we learn to go into the fundamentals, if that's part of your style. This is where we dig up facts. This is where we dig up figures. This is where we quantify. This is where we find price to earnings ratio. This is where we find free cash flow. And by the way, Metastock is, a, is fantastic at giving you all of this information, technicals, fundamentals. If you ignore it, now I've seen, especially back in the old days of the 90s when the market went straight up and nobody had ever, speaking of change, seen anything like it in their life, and a bunch of guys out there were shorting stocks and getting their heads handed to them. A lot of traders were trading on purely on gut instinct. And I'm going to say that back in the, in the mid-90s when I sat in a trading room in New York, we were guilty of this a lot. And while once in a while, pure gut instinct, ignoring the facts and the fundamentals and the technicals can work once in a while, but on a, on a, unless you're really, really amazing, uh, it, it usually can, again, you can get your head handed to you. So we need, as traders and investors, absolutely we need to go into the A quadrant even on a situational basis and study the facts, ma'am, the facts. Okay. And what if I really don't have much order or structure or I don't really strategize around minimizing my risk? And that, of course, is the biggest thing, Diane, and goodness, you've been listening to me for a year now, you know, risk management is the biggest, most important thing we can do as traders and investors. I just talked about the big picture. Well, what you do is you think in the big picture, wow, the market's going lower. What do you do? You apply risk management. You go from the D quadrant in your brain to the B quadrant in your brain and you take action to protect your profits when you're when you're buying a stock you have a step by or an ETF or asset whatever it is you have a step by step methodology of doing it and it works over and over again so order and structure and risk management within that are key to success okay and last but not least what about if I don't really focus anything on C, if I don't really explore what other people have to say, if I don't get my own emotions under control, if I don't look at the market's emotions? Does the market have a mood? Oh my gosh, the market has a definite <laughs> mood. I peg his mood every day of my life. <laughs> 
and I always know how the market's doing on the first note of her hello. <laughs> you can tell. Yeah, I see quadrant C in your brain, and these aren't aren't names we've given to it. This these are labels given to it by a neuroscientist uh, other than Diane, and we'll tell you about him. I call quadrant C C for connection because this is where you connect with other people and you connect with yourself. And indeed, you connect with the stock market. Now, I've been trading long enough to know that people who ignore maybe their quadrant A preference, maybe their quadrant B preference, and maybe they ignore uh, their own feelings. They probably prefer to trade or invest alone. They don't want to join an investment club or go into a trading room. They don't want to talk to anybody about it. Um, and, and, and maybe any feelings they have, they stuff down and they don't, don't, don't pay attention to them. I can tell you right now that connection with other people is fantastic as long as you're in a trading room or an investment club with people who don't have a vested interest in where you put your money, number one. Um, and, 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 and all of us have learned, I mean, I had two mentors that taught me so much of what I know about the market. So talking to other traders, other investors can absolutely be the right thing to do. Being able to spot emotions on a price chart, uh, and certainly stocks have emotions, uh, it, it, a, a chart is actually an emotions on a screen. For that matter, you can see greed, you can see fear, you can see optimism, you can see pure panic. I mean, nothing reveals emotions like a price chart. Also, you need to connect with yourself, and you need to say, am I sitting in my chair, um, and, and am I fearful almost all of the time? Because you are, if you are, you need to change that for the sake of your, of your account and for the sake, quite honestly, of your health. And, of course, in this program, we tell you exactly how to change this, so when you're trading, or investing, or for that matter, the rest of your life, you're walking around in feelings of calm confidence. Calm confidence. That's where we want to be, because that's where we make the best decisions. Okay, Tony. So, what we're beginning to learn is that if you look at the brain, you have to ask the question, what does it have to do with trading? It has everything. It is the most critical component that you have. So one of the things that we do in the program is you receive an actual brain profile. And the way that it works is after you buy the program, you will immediately get some information that will direct you to, um, um, Herman to, to the, the Her Herman International Dominant Instrument. We call it the HVDI for short. And you complete the assessment online, and we send you all of the information. You also get four booklets that tell you all about your brain. It's totally customized for you. Just this instrument alone, this profile, is worth the entire program of the price of the program. So if you were to call them up and try and get this on your own, it would cost you the same. Fortunately, I had the opportunity to work with Ned Herman who created this and originally he created it for GE who wanted to have the best management staff in the entire world and they had the real ability to do that. Ned created this, eventually it became a private product and <clears throat> excuse me, I've used this for about 20 years with companies all over the world and if you'll go to the next slide, let me just show you one of the instruments that you'll get. What this is telling you is uh, for this particular person, this is their brain profile. And before they get this, they get all kinds of data about their brain. And they pull that all together in this very simple chart. So we were talking about big picture. That's quadrant D. We were talking about doing the technicals, the quantifying. That's quadrant A. So that neocortex is A and D, the part that likes to think. So 
we're looking at this particular person and on the diagonal for each quadrant. So if you look at quadrant D on that diagonal, the further you go to the outside, the, the more that is a person's dominant. So we can compare looking at the solid line chart here, this individual's thinking process. And if you look at this, this person really likes to think about things, numbers, facts, figures. They don't like to think about big pictures very much. They probably don't do um, a lot of looking at trends and cycles. This pers person also likes to organize, plan, minimize risk a great deal, and they don't tend to do very much in terms of um, interpersonal intents of emotional. Probably this person um, actually prefers to work alone. So we get, begin to get a picture of how this person prefers to use their brain. So I want you to think about this being muscle. If we were to look at this person's brain, we would see quadrant A and quadrant B would be much more developed. So go back to when I showed you your hands and I asked you to spread out your fingers on those two, that would be your individual brain cells in A and B. That person probably has a lot of brain cells and they're probably very rich with lots and lots of branches. Not so much in C and D. Also, we have on here what this person does when they go into stress and this is the dotted line and you see when the market is going down, I can bet you this person is crunching the numbers, re-crunching them. You have a, a saying for this, Tony. Well, I just know what I do when the market, <laughs> <laughs> and I don't do it as much as I used to because I don't get upset anymore. Uh, and, and, and a lot of that is, is thanks to what uh, we've been, Diane and I have been doing over the last year and so forth. But um, when I get up, I, I can tell when I'm upset with the market because I'm sitting in front of my screens and I'm drawing trend lines all over, uh, all over all of my charts. I draw resistance lines and support lines all over the place. So that's what I tend to do when I get upset. So that's probably what this person does and they probably uh, organize their papers or organize something. In fact, as I look at this particular instrument, this person probably um, really can easily go, when they go into fear, they really tend to get paralyzed. And they tend to go into another part of the brain that we haven't had a chance to talk about, a part of the brain that really doesn't think. It just takes action. It's called the reptilian brain. But uh, we can talk about that later. So if you look at this, there's a set of numbers on the outside of the circle. So this person likes to think about things 52% of the time, and they like to take action 48% of the time. So they're pretty well balanced there. Um, that's pretty good. When we look at left brain versus right brain, we have 78% and we have a 22%. What that begins to tell me is that this person's probably missing some opportunities. They may be getting blindsided by some things. So for instance, Tony was telling you um, in quadrant D, this person may, you know, they may analyze a, you know, a particular stock to death, but they may not be looking at the sector that the stock are, is in, or they may not be looking at the big picture in terms of what's looking happening in the market. So they could easily uh, get blindsided, miss some real important opportunities. We call that analysis paralysis. Yes. So what we do in the program is you get your pr brain profile, and there's not a right or a wrong here at all. But what we want you to be able to do is to identify where your strengths are. And you actually, not only do you get your own brain profile, but you actually do a very individual customized trading profile that tells you very specifically where your strengths are in the trading process and where you're missing some serious opportunities. 
So once we know all of that, then you can start to put a game plan and you can say, okay, this is really my Achilles heel over here. And then we begin to teach you how to strengthen that particular part of the brain. So you now have a lot of rich physiology to deal with because if you don't, two things happen. You're losing brain cells and you're pruning them off which and you're beginning to habituate more and more and the market's changing and becoming more complex. By what we do is we help you to identify specifically what are the areas that are going, impacting you the most and how you can go in there and actually work with that specific part of your brain, build that up so that you have much more to work with, so you have the ability to go do those things. So for instance, we could put this person in a training program about looking at big pictures, looking at trends and cycles, whatever, but this person probably doesn't have the physiology to be able to do that. And so all they're going to do is get frustrated. So first what we're going to do is give them the physiology and then they can do the training to be able to do those things. It also tells us a whole lot more about ourselves. Your, your brain um, profile is going to tell you about and we lost our clicker here, folks. Just hold oh, I on. Had it. Oh, you got it? Okay, here we go. It's going to tell you your learning styles. In trading, you have to do a lot of learning to stay current. The more you understand how you need learning to be for you to be effective, you can begin to set that up real specifically so your learning is fast and it's accurate. You have a, a process in your brain by which your communication works for you. I will guarantee you it's different for other people. So as you're trying to communicate with other people, the more that you can understand your communication style, the more you can ensure that you can set communication up to work well for you. We're also going to, you'll be able to see um, in terms of job success, uh, what kind of jobs would, given how your brain is structured, can you easily have the most kind of success? And because change is very consistent in our trading and in our lives, one of the things that we know is each person has like a fingerprint on how, what their brain needs in order for change to work well for them. You'll begin to understand what your change process is and you can then set things up so that change is successful for you. And last but not least, it's going to tell you how you trade and where you're doing well and those things that you can make even better so you can trade much more like the masters do. So Tony, what else can you tell us about I'm just going to bring in, uh, obviously, a meta stock chart here uh, showing our attendees today a quadrant A trade example. And I'm not going to take any time actually analyzing this chart in particular. I can tell you, as you can see, this is a weekly chart of American Water Works. AWK is the symbol. Uh, it is a value stock. Obviously, it's a utility. And I'm going to say that these are the kinds of, of things that we think about, the kinds of decisions, or, or it's quadrant A, so we're thinking here, but we're, 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 we're thinking of enough information to make decisions. This is a typical trade that a quadrant A trader would make, um, but then you add everything to it and you use your whole brain and you make the right decisions. So we know here on a technical basis that uh, American Water Wakes works and we're using a 30-week moving average. I happen to think water is going to be the commodity of the future. We can see that if all this trader or investor, in this case, thought was, I'm going to hold this stock as long as it walks up, it's 30-week moving average, this person is incorporating, A, that American Water Works has a strong price chart, 
that's the technicals. B, American Water Works has good fundamentals, and it looks like perhaps a good entry down here or some other places on the chart. Then you go to your B quadrant and you organize that information and you say risk reward. Uh, risk, risk is going to be as long as it's above the 30-day moving average, I'm going to stay in it. One or two closes below that and I'm out perhaps and then moving back in could be the same idea. Um, you're calm and confident in your quadrant C and in your quadrant D maybe you're saying, you know what, utilities are doing real well right here because interest rates are low. And I watched the XLU, the Spider Utilities ETF, and it's strong. American Water Works is actually outperforming. So when you use your entire brain, it makes sense that you make more money. And that's what we teach you how to do in our program. And all of session two, and there are four sessions, all of session two is about how is about how to specifically use each quadrant of your brain for various trading and investing activities. And I give you brain gains so that you know how to use each section of your brain, suggestions of what to do and how to do it. So if we look here very, very quickly before we go on, Trade, our name of our product again is Trade Like the Masters, Supercharge Your Brain for Maximum Profits. And in this program, and we're about coming into the end here, but in this program, you will discover how your brain is wired. And that's what Diane told you with the HBDI profile, your personal profile. And maybe something you've never thought of before, I promise you, this will not only help you when you're in trading, but in your investing and definitely in the rest of your life. Uh, it will help you de develop clarity and focus. We just had someone who took this, who, who went through this program said, wow, I didn't realize how which, we, which parts of my brain I wasn't using at all, and now it's making a huge difference. <laughs> And, and I know because I'm, this, I'm the same way. We all have our preferences. But what if we could, once we develop clarity and focus, what if we could use different, go different parts of our brain and get situationally smart? We don't have to change how we think. We don't have to change that maybe we love chocolate like I do. We don't have to change anything about us. We just have to enhance and engage different parts of our brain, even if only in a situational basis. Tony, that's the really important point of the whole program, is that we all have all of this sitting up there, these three pounds that we carry around every day. We have gotten into habits of only tapping into part of it, but all of it is available and all of it is important at different times. So what we learn to do, as she said, situationally, we learn when to tap into what part when for optimum return on our investments. Thank you, Diane. That's exactly right. Um, it, it, we, are, we are situationally smart and that is ideal in this world. We're also going to tell you about, in this program, my brain gains. These brain gains are going to take your travel, tra trading and investing to, to much bigger heights. I know it has even mine. Uh, and finally, from, from Diane, you're going to learn the newest techniques in neuroscience. Everything is about the brain these days. Everything is about the brain. And, and if you think about it, every trading decision and Every trading action begins in our brains. And here, we've been ignoring these poor brains for, for most of us for all of our lives. And this is, this is where it needs help. Diane's going to show you how to upgrade your brain, simple things you can do. So not only are you going to presumably make more money if you apply yourself, but how you're going to have a happier and healthier life. We call our method, whole brain trading. Our traders call it a whole new way to trade. Now we are offering this program to you at a low price, a big discount for Metastock, uh, for Metastock people only. 
and we're only offering this discount coupon until Sunday night at midnight. Our recorded online training program with both myself and Diane, you can look at it and for tons of information on it, go to TonyTurner.com forward slash supercharge. TonyTurner.com forward slash supercharge. And just until Sunday night, for you only, we are giving you a discount coupon code, $100 discount coupon code. What you type into when you're, at, uh, when you're purchasing it, the discount code is Super Meta, Super Meta, Super Meta. The coupon is good until Sunday, May 8th. So that's the link again, TonyTurner.com, Supercharge. And if you do have any questions at all, you can send an email to info at TonyTurner.com. And Tina Hosley, our Director of Operations, will be happy to answer any questions you have, or if it's a question Diane and I need to answer, we will be happy to answer any questions you have. So uh, please go check it out. It's a, a whole new program. It's a whole new way of thinking. No one else is doing this. So what you have here is you have a, a trading, I'm going to say expert, who's been in the market for 20 years combined with a neuroscientist who is also a psychologist and, by the way, has her MBA so she understands business. You've got all of this com experience combined into one program, and we are dedicated to helping you get your brains up and moving and running a little faster that you, so you can expand your trading profits, your investing profits, and expand your life. This program has a ton of bonuses, a ton of handouts, everything you need to make big, big steps in your life. So Jeff, thank you so much for having us tonight. We very much appreciate it. And thank you everyone for attending. Thank you. Thanks, guys. Uh, thanks for everyone for coming tonight, and uh, we'll see you at the next one.